So, um, let's say that you have a person. Let's let's call her Joanne, and Joanne utters uh, S P. Right? She says it should be the case that you get karma for that post. She's a redditor. She sees a post and she says it should be the case that you get karma for that post. That would be good. Right? Um, let's say she also utters something like S Q. She says, it should be the case that that post sucks. It's kind of weird, right? That, like, we wouldn't expect somebody to post that, right? So if somebody posts that in the comment and says, you know, it should be that you get karma for that, that you get some karma. Um, but also, it should be that that post sucks. That's kind of a weird thing for somebody to say, right? But it's not that weird for somebody to say, this, right? So let's suppose Joanne said D of P. Right? Let's suppose she said, uh, yippee, you get karma for that post. Yay, you got karma. Right? Let's suppose she also said D of Q. Right? Um, that's not that weird, right? She, if she says, you know, yay, your post sucking, right? Uh, or I wish your post had sucked. It would be great if your post had sucked. We sort of get that sort of uh, uh, cognitive dis dissonance going on uh, with, with Joanne, right? We, we want them, we want the poster and the OP to get karma, but we also sort of wish that we got karma instead for a better post because their post sucked. We also sort of, you know, wish they hadn't succeeded. We wish selfishly that we had gotten karma instead, right? So these two desires make sense together for Joanne to have. Um, whereas the original pair, uh, SP and SP, SQ, uh, don't seem to make sense for her to have. Uh, so that's one argument you might give that this, this non-cognitivist analysis of terms doesn't work. Um, now suppose the non-cognitivist, AJ Ayer, fires back at us and says, oh, wait a minute then. What about, what about your stupid interpretation of, you know, SP and SQ. What, what's that? Does that work? Uh, let's see. Right? So let's say Joanne had said, oops. So let's say Joanne had said, uh, you know, A of SP, where A of SP we will, we will call is the assertion that SP. So let's say SP was just a belief she had, and she, she said, it should be the case that you get karma for that post. And it should be the case that uh, that post sucks. Um, let's say she uttered those two things. That would be just as stupid as her saying, you know, uh, it should be the case that you get karma for that post. And it should be the case um, that your post sucks, right? Um, but that's not really a bad thing, is it, right? <laughs> just, the point is that it's stupid, right? The, the point is these things on the inside are supposed to be stupid when, when they are uttered together, right? If you just had these alone, and you saw somebody uttering SP and SQ, right? You will remember the first example was Joanne saying these things, and they were dumb. We, we said that's kind of a weird thing to say. So it makes sense that A of SP and A of SQ should be weird things to say if they're correct definitions or meanings or interpretations analysis of these terms, right? Whereas D of SP and D of SQ, those together, those aren't, those aren't weird. They should be weird, right? Because SP and SQ are weird. Why are the meanings of SP and SQ not weird if SP and SQ are weird? Um, and so that's sort of the problem with the way the non-cognitivist uh, is sort of analyzing um, those, those terms. But uh, still, the non-cognitivist might might try to sort of save some ground here and say, well, look, uh, I get that your analysis is, seems, sounds nicer, but does this really solve the Frank A.D. problem? Can you really get the logic of, you know, operators, elocutionary operators out of this, right? Or, or are you ju in just as worse, just as bad a position as me, who thinks that these really mean, SP and SQ really mean DP and DQ? 
are those just as bad with logic as, as these sort of symbols? Um, well, one way you might analyze that is we might try to do an operation like the one we were doing earlier, with necessarily, right? So earlier we said, you know, if you say necessarily P and necessarily Q, that's like saying necessarily P and Q. So if I say necessarily you're falling out the window, and necessarily you're going to break your legs, then that's sort of the same thing as saying necessarily you're going to fall out the window and you're going to break your legs, right? Um, it's sort of the same thing. Right, so what if we did that for, uh, for the non cognitive version of, uh, of our sentence, right? D of P and D of Q. So let's, let's see if we can build an illocutionary logic, a logic of speech X for these sort of terms. Right? And so technically, uh, these aren't premises in, in an argument. Right? When I put this 9 here, I infer something from these, that's not a real logical inference because these aren't true. Really what this is saying when I write it down is somebody, John, Joanne, is saying D of P, right? That's what it means when I write this down in this line. Um, and this means, you know, Joanne is saying D of Q, right? And this inference is, if Joanne is saying these two things, then she's also saying this, right? Um, uh, and so you can sort of, on your own, you can write an S there to remind you of that. Um, but so, so let's say Joanne said these two things, right? She said, I desire that you get come for that post, and I desire oh, your post sucks. I have those two desires. Then you'd be able to infer, I desire that P and Q, right? If D is supposed to be a logical operator, if it's supposed to be an operator that behaves normally, um, I forgot exactly what the name of this sort of rule for operators is called. Uh, I'll look it up. But um, uh, yeah, uh, logical operators, it tends to be that if you attach you know, a sort of sentential operator to something, or you know, any kind of operator to something else, you, you can pull it out in this way if it's uh, if propositions or conjunctions like this. Right? Um, so this illocutionary logic sucks. Right? Why? Because this is a stupid thing to say. And these two are fantastic things to say, right? So I desire that your post sucks and you get karma anyway is not what I'm trying to say when I say these two things. When I say these two things, right, I'm saying, you know, I wish you, it would be great if your post sucked, right? Because then I would get karma. But you should get, it would be great if you got karma anyway because your post didn't suck, right? So the interesting thing about desires is it doesn't really Desires don't really track down whether something is true or false in the world. Um, they, what they're tracking is what you would like the world to be like, right? Um, and so that's where this dilemma comes from. Because uh, when, when you have P and Q and you just remove the D, uh, you're making these two true. When these are happening, right, this is not saying that Q is true. This is just talking about how it would feel to Joanne if Q is true, right? Joanne would love it if Q was true, right? But Joanne isn't saying, I would love it if Q was true and P was true. That's not what she means when she says, I would love it if you got karma, and I would love it if you post sucked, right? So this is just messing up the logic here, right? But if we read it as saying A of S P. A of SQ, and we infer A of SP and SQ. Is that messing up the logic? Is that bad? Um, well, yes, right? So if I say, you know, I assert that you should get karma for that post, and you should, uh, your post should suck, right? You should get karma for that post, and your post should suck. I assert that. Um, that's a stupid thing to say, too, isn't it? So that's, doesn't that show that assertions, cognitive interpretations of moral state, statements are, are dumb? Um, well, no. Why? Because these two, again, like we said earlier, these two never would make sense for someone to say together, right? So this premise, premise, it's not really a true thing, it's just somebody saying something, um, would never be said together with this thing, right? Um, or at least it would be rarely said, maybe by like some trollish person. But uh, usually people don't say these two together, right? 
And so they wouldn't, this wouldn't happen, right? We wouldn't get this problem in our logic, right? Nobody would infer this because this would be false, right? If they did, if we had something like A less Q, right? If this was true, um, then this would be true. And that would be fine because this person is a troll, right? This, this person is trying to mess around. They're saying, you know, you should get home to that post and your post should suck. So this sort of transition makes sense because they're just saying absurd things. But usually this doesn't happen, right? So that turns out false usually. In the other case, it did it. That's why you were you that's why the conclusion is bad, because you can't just rule out all those cases where it usually happens. Um, and that was sort of a complicated version of the Frege Geach problem. Um, the simpler versions sort of are discussed in chapter one in Michael Huber's book, and he sort of tackles arguments against them. Um, and I'm going to sort of go over that simple version. I'm going to briefly introduce that simple version here, right? Um, so SP, then S, not Q, right? S is not Q. Let's put brackets around that. Right, so um, this, this sort of thing is saying, uh, if it should be the case that you get karma for that post, then it should be the case that your post doesn't suck. Right? That seems like a thing that makes sense. Right? That seems like something that people would say. Normal people would say things like this. Um, but what, what happens when the non-cognitivist analyzes this conditional, this if-then statement? If this, then this. Which doesn't mean that this is true, it's just an if this, there it is. Um, they would say, D of P, then D not Q. Sorry about the squeaky. Uh, right, so that is dumb, right? No, no one, first of all, this is saying yippee, you get karma for that post, right? Yippee, you get karma for that post is not something that can be true or false. So you can't say things like, uh, if yippee, you get karma for that post, then yippee if, you know, your post doesn't suck. That's not normal. That's not a thing that normally would be said by people. Um, and so that's, so there's a problem with what happens when a non-cognitivist has to analyze sentences where it should be that P is supposed. So when somebody says things like, let's say it should be that you get karma for that post. They, it's strange to say, let's say, yippee, you get karma for that post. It's kind of weird for people to say that. And so the, the, this first chapter, um, actually the second chapter, rather, on non cognitivism deals with a bunch of objections to the Frege Nietzsche problem, or attempts to solve that simple version uh, that I gave of the Frege Nietzsche problem. And I'll go over that uh, in another video in a summary of the chapter.